In this week's episode, we're going to be learning how to compose orchestral hip hop for sports networks and maybe even sports related commercials. That's where you'll most likely hear this kind of music getting placed, but it can also end up in other places as well. Now the purpose of this series is to introduce you to the different tools, plugins, and techniques that I use to create these tracks so that hopefully you can start integrating them into your own productions as well. So just like last week's episode, the track we're going to be working with was also featured in a mock-up that I created. So if you're interested in hearing this piece of music in context, I definitely recommend checking that out. I'll be leaving a link to that video in the description box. We're also going to be working with the full version of the track this week since it's already been released. But we're going to be breaking it down into smaller sections as we progress further into this tutorial. Okay. Let's jump right into the listening. Alright, so the first thing we're going to start with is the beat because that's the foundation of hip hop music. So I'm going to go ahead and solo out the drum mix and even the bass mix because that includes our 808 drum that you may or may not have heard depending on what you're listening to this on. But uh, yeah, that's the only bass instrument I've, I've got going on for this particular track. So. Anyways, like the drums that I'm using to create this sound is from a plugin that I use often called the Reason Rack plugin. And the great thing about Reason is that it includes a lot of great kits for hip hop. And more specifically, it includes a lot of fantastic 808 kits. So I really like using the, the Kong drum designer for that because that's that's where they're they're all at. And for this project I use a kit called Sparkle so that just had the sound I was looking for. Um, as far as the 808 is concerned, it's, I, once again I'm using the Reason Rack plugin but this time I'm using a different instrument and it's called the Thor Polysonic Synthesizer and luckily this one has a patch uh, for an 808 bass drum so you just gotta load that up and you got yourself a great 808 bass drum right there. So that's what I'm using. 
uh, for the for the drum section. So we're just gonna solo that out and listen to it starting from uh, for, from where the beat drops. So let's take a listen. Okay, so the next section we're going to look at is the percussion section because that's what we're going to be using to really embellish and decorate the beat to make it even more uh, significantly better than already is. So I'm just going to solo that out. And uh, in this particular per uh, percussion section, I've got a couple of instruments. One of them you might have noticed is the tubular bells. Uh, that is just a stereotypical but like incredibly awesome hip-hop uh, sound you know part of the the hip-hop vo vocabulary that I just had to include for this track it just, it just makes the track I mean I don't think it would sound the same without these uh, tubular bells but uh, yeah so that's a pretty big part uh, another one that you may or may not have noticed is uh, the break drum and anvils so that's just kind of like accenting um, if I'm not mistaken, it's accenting every second four beats, uh, beat f every uh, beat four of every two measures. So it's just, it gives that extra impact. So that's like a kind of like a stereotypical orchestral hip hop sound. Uh, you'll hear that a lot in orchestral hip hop tracks. They have that, that going on. Uh, another thing I added in here is the tambourine. Now I, uh, sometimes record uh, live tambourines like this is uh this is the one i'm using but you know sometimes i also go with the uh, sample libraries uh because sometimes it's just simpler and maybe like just the tambourine i have doesn't have the sound that i'm looking for so it'll be um it just depends but you know like if you wanted to record real tambourines you just get a condenser mic and it's it's very difficult to screw up the sound of a tambourine, but the performance of a tambourine is incredibly difficult. So sometimes it's, it's just a lot easier for consistency's sake to, uh, to use samples. Um, the other instrument uh, I've got for, uh, and the last instrument I've got in this percussion section is a magnificent Wuhan 35 inch gong. It just sounds like it just sounds epic like it's just it, it makes it's another one of those elements that makes this track like i just i absolutely love this uh, this gong and all of these uh, samples are coming from uh from the play engine composer cloud um they're they're coming from slightly different libraries uh however i think uh the anvils are coming from uh or uh hollywood orchestral percussion um the uh, tubular bells are from the same library, if I'm not mistaken. The tambourine, I'm pretty sure, is coming from either Goliath or Storm Drum. And um, yeah, that's the, the Wuhan Gong is also coming from, uh, from Storm Drum, one, one of the two. Um, but if you have Composer Cloud, you're gonna have access to all of these, so you really have nothing to worry about. And either way, like I, I recommend, like just take a screenshot or something. Like these are all the libraries that you absolutely need to have if you're making uh, music for TV and film. Like not all of them are, are necessary, but these are the ones I, I personally recommend. So, anyways, let's listen to the percussion section on its own, and I guess we'll uh, we'll start it off from uh, from right over here.
The next thing on our list is going to be the orchestral section, which is going to include the brass and strings. So I'm going to go ahead and solo those out. And I'm going to get a little bit more specific with the patches I'm using for these, just so you know which articulations to, um, to look out for if you're looking to do something similar. Uh, the long sustained violin sound uh, that you hear, which is kind of like the tension element in this track, is coming from Hollywood Strings. Once again, Composer Cloud. Um, it's going to be in violins. It's going to be in long. And it's, uh, it's one of these. can't remember exactly which one it is, but it's just, it's, uh, it's one of these just standard sustained violin patches. So nothing special for that one. For the um, kind of more percussive uh, staccato violin, it's actually a marcato articulation. So that will be in short, tight, and uh, you have marcato, uh, which is right over here. So that's like the marcato, that's just, it's a little bit, has a little bit more sustain than staccato, it just has a little bit more bite to it. So. You'll have to play around with these different articulations to find which one suits your track best, but this one is definitely a marcato. For uh, the brass, I'm not quite sure which instrument this is because it just goes under the folder low brass, um, but it's basically a short staccato, staccatissimo articulation. That's what gives that percussive sound versus the, the long sustained uh, sound that you might also be familiar with. But that basically covers the uh, the orchestral section. So we're gonna we're gonna listen to that uh, on its own once again from where the beat drops. Okay, so the last section we're going to look at, which is not really a section, it's actually just one instrument, but just as important since it's a very signature element of this track, and that is the keys, which in this case is just a solo uh, grand piano. And the patch that I'm using for this is very specific to the sound that I'm getting. It's, it's not like some special type of EQ that I did outside of the instrument, and I'm going to explain that very quickly. So the instrument I'm using is piano, uh, oh, piano V2 from Arturia. So this is part of the Arturia V collection, which is like the best keyboard collection you can ever ask for. I definitely recommend checking that out if you're looking for keyboards, high quality keyboards to be more specific. but. Uh, it, this one's a specific patch called Old um, American Old Radio, which you can see it over here. It has kind of like a telephone kind of EQ. So, I mean, you could just get a normal piano and do that outside using an EQ plugin, but this one just, it's already like, it's ready out of the box. So, but that's basically what it is. It's a kind of like a telephone, um, megaphone kind of EQ. So it has more of that, um, it has a certain, you know, tonal quality that uh, makes it kind of sound like a, like an old record or or something like that, you know, and it just it, it totally fit this track. So, and um, other than that, there's nothing really special going on with this piano. It's just really like the sound of it is is what's important. And before listening to our example, I just want to bring up one other element that I forgot, and that's the riser. Um, the riser itself is from, th this one is from Apple Sound Library, so this is included in uh, Logic Pro. It's, it's probably the only riser I actually like in that entire library and it just fit this track perfectly. So um, if you want to listen to that, just rewind uh, the video back to the beginning and listen to the riser, but I mean it's, it's um, it, that, this is before I started using Arcade by Output. Not, that's what I would have most likely used if uh, if I had access to it at the time. But, anyways, like this riser from Apple Sound Library, just you know, it just works. 
So yeah, let's listen to the grand piano, but like just uh, we're just gonna listen to a couple of bars. Okay, there's one thing I didn't cover in last week's episode that I wanted to dive into just a little bit this week and because it's very important to be um, f uh, for TV and film music to be more specific and that's just the structure of uh, these types of tracks and the structure uh, as you'll notice is not like it's not necessarily the typical uh, structure you'd expect from from a hip-hop track where you'd have a rapper you know rapping over and that's because it has to have somewhat of a progression it, it can't just be like that your your verse and your chorus cannot be the same uh, each time around it has to like something new has to happen every four to eight measures and the beginning of your track cannot sound like the end of your track so like if you're repeating a section it has to have new elements being introduced to it and honestly in my opinion commercial music that you hear on spotify should have these uh these elements you know structurally speaking either way because that's just what makes like good music and what develops you know the storytelling process of the song you know without even words so you know adding words to it will do that naturally but i mean the music itself can tell a story and that's what you really want to do with this kind of music so I mean uh, we're not we're not gonna go back to uh, to the listening if you want to just listen to the track uh, on its own just go back to the beginning of this video but you can just see from from the way it starts like it just slowly builds up like you have like just the kick and then it adds like you know the snare and we're just introducing elements bit by bit and there's there's like somewhat of a there's a break over here so it kind of gets like a little bit more down in the dynamic range it's it's a little bit softer there's 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 no drums for you know for like eight bars so that's something worth mentioning and then you know once the beat finally drops then you know there are these little these little breaks you can see you can see it. it's like an indentation almost like when you're starting a new paragraph so that's really important for uh, for TV and film music is having these breaks because this is what editors use to start your track from different positions. I mean, they can use an alt mix, but they can also just take the full version and just make their edits using these uh, these breaks or these punctuations, if you will. So that is, like those are like two very important elements of these types of tracks that are going to be used for TV and film. It's uh, a constant progression. It doesn't have to be from soft to loud, like. Not every track has to be a, um, you know, a linear progression from from low to 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 high. Like it could be like low, high, low, high. Like there are different um, schemas that you can use, but it just has to progress. It has to be consistently evolving, and these punctuation marks, these breaks, um, that's that's also very important. You just have to put yourself in the shoes of the editor. Like, how would they? what is their experience going to be like working your tra with your track is it going to be more difficult to work with your music or is it going to be easier than other uh, than other tracks on the market and that's what's going to make um, you know the the music supervisors or whoever's in charge of like sourcing music like that's what's going to make them come back they're going to say oh we uh, really enjoyed working with this composer's track because he did all the right things he did all the right added all the right elements to the track to make it really easy to work with and edit so that is like what is going to make your what is going to distinguish your track from uh, from the rest of the competition another thing and this is the last thing in uh, regards to structure is some sort of a definite hit ending like it has to have like if you put like a little bit of extra effort into just making some sort of a special like really final ending like nothing sustaining or no fade outs like it has to be like an impact it has to be like a um an exclamation mark or a period like the track is finished it's it can't have like um 
it can't have a fade out let's just leave it at that it cannot fade out it has to have an impact at the end so these are very important elements to consider when we're talking about structure so as usual we're just going to briefly go over the mixing and mastering for this track um, and it's not anything significantly different than what we covered in last week's episode because my mixing and mastering process is pretty consistent you know all around regardless of genre although there are specific things i might do to specific genres so that's why we're going to just briefly go over any outstanding you know details for this uh, for this particular track so i'm just gonna unsolo everything and uh so yeah basic channel eq compression on all tracks um i am using pancake on this one and i'm using it on the tambourine uh and uh, if you're not familiar with pancake it's just like it just it's a free plugin and it just basically uh automates the panning from there are different presets you can use but it just basically makes the job of automating panning much easier so i just have a little bit of that uh on the tambourine because you know the tambourine can tend to get a little bit uh maybe irritating after a while if you just leave it the way it is especially when you're using a, a sample and not a real tambourine so it just it just adds a little bit of like I don't want to say dynamics because it's just it's not it's not changing the volume it's changing the volume from left to right which might give you the illusion but it's it's just creating a little bit more interest for that particular part so you know you'll notice that that's where I end up using pancake the most it's just on tracks that might get to the point where they're just I don't want to say annoying, but like if, if you feel like any one of your parts are getting are kind of sound like annoying or they stick out a little bit too much, Pancake might be a way to add a little bit of interest or to just kind of bring them to the background a little bit more. So that's just something to keep in mind. And as you can see, I also have it set for the um, the the long sustained string part because I mean, as you can imagine, like just a, like a really like long sustained string part especially in the high register it can get a little bit irritating if there's nothing going on like so this is just adds a little bit more interest it adds a little bit more dynamics uh it makes it sound a little bit more like it's coming alive and that's amplified even more by the use of a tremolo and i'm not once again i'm not using a tremolo in the conventional sense we covered this in in last week's episode but it's it's just I'm using it basically in the place of automating the volume with a modulation wheel. This is this is kind of like a shortcut way of doing that. And as you can see, I have it set the speed to a bar and the depth to 66. So what it's doing is it's basically making it sound like it's, you know, at the end of each bar and at the beginning of each bar, it just sounds like it's breathing in and out. So the volume is, is going up and down and it's just making it sound a little bit more lifelike. Um, so if you're if you're using it for that purpose and it's just um, something general like this, you can definitely use a, a tremolo uh, plugin in the place of using a modulation wheel. But obviously, this isn't going to replace any specific um, articulation stuff you're going to be doing with a modulation wheel. Like that, you're going to have to go in there and and program that or perform it yourself. So that's that's basically what's going on in terms of the tracks there's nothing special uh as far as my submixes are concerned and i really hope that you guys have started using submixes in your projects uh i hope that you notice how much easier it is to organize your tracks this way and it just it makes the process a lot smoother uh but for me specifically i just it's just a second phase in my mixing process so like i'm not using the same plugins here as i am here the channel eq is the same but i got uh, a, a plugin called wolf compressor going on over here and, and this is this is one of my favorite plugins in the world and if you're making hip-hop music though like you cannot pass up this opportunity like this is the plugin for to get that like really old school traditional hip hop sound like it's more than just a compressor I, I know i promised i would make a video dedicated to this plugin and i will 
but it just it it, it, it is the sound like if you want to get that mad libs kind of like vintage vinyl um, digital whatever kind of uh, sound this is a really easy and affordable way to get it i mean there are other ways of doing it but like this is just this is just one of the best plugins for for that specific usage. So if you're making hip hop music, get this plugin. I highly recommend it. So I, I have it set on every um, on every channel, and I'm going pretty heavy on this track. That's just because of the genre. On certain genres, like maybe like something more orchestral, I might bring it down a notch. But like when I making like hip hop or funk or pop it's usually set pretty high so that pretty much covers it for for that I mean for for uh, reverb I just want to talk about a, a preset that I use uh, pretty often and this is just kind of like my go-to uh, reverb preset when I just want to add a little bit of space when I'm not going for anything uh, too out of the ordinary this is just kind of like the most neutral, uh, you know, reverb sound I could find in uh, in Chromaverb. It's called Dense Studio, so that will be under Rooms, Dense Studio, and you see I, I have it set pretty low. It just it just adds like that little bit of glue. It just kind of sounds like it was recorded in a room, and it doesn't have too many overtones. It doesn't ring out too much. It's just a very neutral sounding compressor. So I have that usually set for drums and bass like because you don't want something unless you want something specific for drums like that's usually what a you know you want to go for something pretty neutral uh, but in regards to brass I got a brass hall so something a little bit more spacey and roomy same thing for strings I got a concert hall so that's just you know especially for those instruments to add like a little bit more of that like it was recorded inside of a, of a hall like a, a bigger, you know, more um, more overtones, more richness, like, and you know that's why it's it's different for each instrument group or each submix. But that's that's basically what I got going on for this track. For the keys, I can't remember if I did anything different. It's just yeah, so a clean big room, just to add like a little bit more space, let's say relative to the drums or the bass, and. I mean, you'll notice that I'm just using stock, uh, stock, not only stock plugins, but stock presets. And some people might be against doing that. And to that, I say, like, technically speaking, your DAW or any piece of software, any plugin you use is basically a preset of computer code. So where do we draw the line in regards to what's using a preset or, or what's okay or what's not okay? It's... If, if it makes your workflow better, it makes you make more music in less time and it just it sounds just as good. There's nothing wrong with using presets, like especially if it's the right preset and you do your own adjustments and there's just nothing wrong with using presets, guys. So uh, so that pretty much takes care of the mixing uh, aspect of it. Now, so if we're, we're just going to briefly talk about mastering because we covered in the, the same uh, the same thing in the last episode. It's it's the exact same mastering chain, but I basically got a linear EQ, a multipressor, another uh, vo instance of Wolf compressor, except this one is set differently. It's it's usually set pretty low because you don't want to do anything drastic in mastering. It's just to add like a little bit more edge, a little bit more bump. Uh, Chromaverb set pretty low, just a very neutral. Uh, 80s Golden Gate, 10%, so it's barely noticeable. It just glues the the entire mix together. Add limiter, and in case you missed last episode, uh, this is the loudness meter I use. And when we're talking about loudness, um, this isn't the same as the volume of your track. This is actually talking about. I mean, I guess a good way to describe loudness, it's, this isn't the only parameter that affects loudness, but it's basically has a lot to do with your dynamic range. So the smaller the dynamic range is of your track, the louder perceptually it will appear. So 
generally the range you're going for, especially for TV and film music, is going to be somewhere between negative 12 and negative 10 LUFS. And to be more specific, the reason you want to do that is because most of the time the tracks that are going to be placed in TV and film are going to be used as background music. And that being said, you don't want to lose certain elements of your mix like at those lower volumes. So another thing you're going to want to do for mixing and mastering is also mix and master at lower volumes so you hear if any of that, like if you're missed, like let's say your kick drum, it, it just completely gets lost in the mix at a lower volume. You want to try and fix that. You know, so like it might sound great at a high volume, but at a lower volume, you might lose like maybe the uh, the 808, you know, and you want to find a way to have that come out in the mix at any any level. So that's something you're going to want to do there. But in general, just getting your track loud enough is also going to just take care of that problem for you. It doesn't really matter what specific like if, if your track doesn't sound good because it, it will most likely not sound that great if you go uh, higher than negative 10 and that's because it'll either sound over compressed or it'll just start distorting like you don't you don't want to sacrifice the quality or the tonal quality of your track to get it louder like you want to find a good balance between loudness and sound quality and it's going to be different for every track, but generally speaking, I find that that sweet spot for me is going to be between negative 12 and negative 10. But obviously there are certain genres, like maybe something more orchestral that you want to have more dynamic range. Well, then you might go a little bit lower, like you might go negative 14. Either way, it doesn't matter because your music is going to be normalized on if it's being used on television, it's they're going to normalize your music. They cannot broadcast it unless it's being normalized at a certain standard. And if I'm not mistaken, I mean this is going to vary from uh, country to country, but it's it's it could be negative 18. Some countries, I think it's negative 23 LUFS. But you don't really have to worry about that stuff. Just make sure that your music sounds good and it sounds as loud as possible. But that's really a big topic and something maybe we can discuss uh, further in another video. So let me know if you'd like to hear more about that. Uh, also, leave me a comment if you want me to go dive into any of these specific plugins or any specific step in the mixing and mastering process. This is just like an overview, but if you want me to focus on something and dedicate a video to it, you're just gonna have to let me know or I'll end up doing some one of them at some point like just just be patient for that but definitely I'm, I'm like in regards to EQing and compression there's definitely a tutorial coming up uh, on on those two subjects so that pretty much sums it up for mixing and mastering the only other thing I want to bring up because this is a mastering thing actually is you want to get into the habit of fading out your tracks at the very end and this isn't a conventional fade, like you're not fading where there's any sound. Well, there's the, you're just basically using this as a precaution. So once the track is finished, so you see my ramp, it starts just a little bit before. It probably starts right on the last hit. And it just fades out like over the course of like the next two bars. and. That's because if you just let it ring out and your audio file cuts at a certain point and there's still a little bit of sound, I mean, that really doesn't sound professional. So you want to make sure that your audio file, once it reaches the, the end, it has like it is at zero dB, like there is no volume whatsoever. So just get into the habit of doing this at the end of each one of your tracks. It just even if there's you think there's nothing like they're just depending on what you're listening to there might be a little bit of like hiss or a little bit of a of a tail of a of a crash or something just make sure to to take care of that at the end so there you go there you have it so i hope that you enjoyed learning how to compose orchestral hip hop for tv and film placements and i also hope that you're enjoying the series and getting a lot of mileage out of it as I mentioned, if ever there's anything specific you'd like me to go over or focus on in a future episode, 
just let me know in the comments that's the best place to reach me and if you have any specific genres that you like to learn how to make that hey maybe I don't even know how to make that genre yet let me know as well and I'll either cover it in a future episode or learn that genre and cover it in a future episode. So, and if ever you doubt that learning this many genres is uh, possible, think again. You can check out a playlist on our channel called Decibel Peak Studio to, uh, to get some proof on that. And you'll notice that there is already a large variety of different musical genres that have been covered and there are new ones being added weekly so if you doubt your ability to produce more than two or three genres of music don't doubt your ability it's 100 percent possible you just got to find the genres that you're passionate about and it'll be a lot easier that way if you're creating a genre just because you think it'll get you placements don't go that direction it's the, the the results will most likely not be that great and you'll most likely end up wasting a lot of your time and energy and resources so just find a couple of genres that you're really passionate about and specialize in them it doesn't have to be limited to two or three genres it could be it could be five it could be six it could be as many as you want as long as you have the will to learn and master these genres, you'll see that the rest will come easy. So I really hope that you'll subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop for future episodes. We'll be releasing one every week covering a new genre of music. And um, if this week's genre didn't float your boat, well, maybe next week's will. So on that note, I wish you a good week, a good productive week, and we'll see you in the next one.